Hello, my name is Winford Dole. If you've ever been frustrated by any aspect of your golf game, I've got some exciting news for you. Whether it's inconsistency with your long game, your short game with putting, or whether it is you collapse a bit under pressure, whatever it is, let me tell you something about how your skills develop and what scientists have now taught us about what we can do about that to transform it and break through those glass ceilings that's developed. Well, research has been coming out from various amazing universities around the world about this critical element of how we develop skills. And we've always focused on two things. That is having good coaching and doing lots of practice. But of course, there is actually a third one that we never talk about, and that is how able is our brain to acquire that type of skill? Because the very ability to develop skills varies from person to person. We've always assumed we can't do anything about it, but that's not the way it is today. So let's talk about how the brain creates skills, how it integrates everything together so we have a consistent, reliable skill that never lets us down. Well, the work is all done by the cerebellum. That's a bit of the brain here at the back that's linking brain and body together. In fact, it also links all the different parts of the brain together. So it's like a master junction box. I think of it as the skill development center of the brain because when you make the right connections, the right things happen in the skill. All of the information that comes from different parts of our body ends up going through the cerebellum. So all of the sensory inputs we have and just the touch and feeling through our body and through our muscles, there's thousands and thousands of them. Then all of our visual senses, what we see, our spatial awareness, the ability to move our eyes backwards and forwards so we can track moving balls and read and so on, our hearing, our smell and so on, taste, all of these things are critical senses and the cerebellum's job is to pull it all together so the brain can make sense of it and do the right things at the right time. And that's how we develop our sporting skills. But of course it starts when we are young children. When babies are born, the cerebellum isn't developed, so they can't walk or talk or do hardly anything. So the cerebellum is working hard, creating those fundamental basic skills that we need just to walk and talk and so on. But some of them develop slightly different to the way it develops in other people. So we have what looks like different, slightly different habits. But those fundamental skills or habits become the building blocks for all of the skills we need later in life. So if you just look at the way people walk, some people walk clumsily, messily. Their arms swing in different ways or don't swing at all. There's all sorts of differences. Their legs either go straight forward or they're at 10 to 2. All sorts of different habits that develop very, very early on. But remember, these become the building blocks for which the more complex skills, like putting, are made from. The cerebellum does all of this. It makes those fundamental skills, some, some of which become bad habits, and then it works on making the more complicated skills, like putting. And the way it does it is this. When the brain tells you to putt, it sends two instructions. It sends one set of instructions to your muscles, and it sends another set of instructions to your cerebellum. When you've done the putt, another message goes back to the cerebellum and says, and this is what actually happened. Now, if what should have happened matches what actually happened, that's great. You've developed that skill. The cerebellum hasn't got anything else to do. But if what actually happened is slightly different to what should have happened, the putt was too short or it went wide or whatever it was, there's an error and the cerebellum has to work out how to avoid that error in the future. So it adjusts that program, that hardwired program of connections that creates that complex skill, such that the error is less likely to happen next time. And that's repeated. And that's what practice is all about. It's turning what the coach has been telling you to do into something that becomes hardwired. But for most of us, some of our skills hit a glass ceiling. It doesn't matter how much coaching we have, it doesn't matter how much practice we do, it doesn't get any better. It's still a bit inconsistent some of the time. Why is that? Because those fundamental skills include one or two bad habits, which means that the very building blocks of that complex skill you've been practicing hasn't been able to do its job properly because the information it's getting is not consistent, it's not reliable. 
So, what can you do about that? Well, these scientists have taught us enough so that we can now work out how to change the role of the cerebellum. And it's a bit like pressing the reset button. Because we, now we can go back to those very initial fundamental skills that some of which have become bad habits, do an audit on them and redevelop them so that they become much more consistent, much more reliable and makes a huge difference to the reliability, the precision, those more complex skills that we went, want when we're playing golf. How does that happen? Well, it's exercise based. Is it simple? Well, it is, but every program from every person is different because your brain is unique. So you need different sets of stimulation to get the cerebellum working again, to create more plasticity, to go back in time and correct those fundamental things. The program itself is actually quite simple. It's 10 minutes a day, typically six to nine months can transform the cerebellum and in turn that will transform the errors in those bad habits by pressing the reset button and creating plasticity. And then all of those things you've been working on typically get a lot better. Now, do you have to start again practicing from the beginning? No, you don't because the cerebellum has stored all of that practice in what's called the internal model and the inverse model. It's really exciting science. It really proves that we've all got huge potential, more than we thought. We now know where it's hiding in the cerebellum. So if anything is frustrating you in your golf game, don't shoot the coach. You now know what to do. Have a look at what your cerebellum is doing or rather what it's not doing and set about putting it right. All the best.